Hello everybody. This is an extraordinary biology examination session. It's extraordinary because it's an extra session held on West Australia Day. You're looking at an extraordinary sunrise in Onslow, where I was recently. This is Catherine Morritt, your biology tutor on the RLS team. As I've been travelling around, I've been uh, listening to what you've been saying and realising that some students don't realise that there are three examinations this year. So I've gone through this before, but I'll just alert you to where you can find it again on Schoology. It's in the very first tutorial, tutorial zero, on how an ATAR course is structured. It's important to look at this structure because the ATAR score is made of 50% of your school-based assessments and 50% the third external examination. But the school-based assessment is divided into roughly 50-50 tests, extended responses and investigations. And then roughly 50% of that is the two internal examinations, they're called. They're exams that are set by your side school. So that's what you're sitting at the moment. You're sitting semester one of those and then later in the year, around um, term three, you'll sit semester two exam. Then the big external exam comes where everybody in the state sits, where everybody in the state sits at. And that is the exam that is worth 50% of your total ATAR score. While we're talking about examinations, I thought I should check the examination timetable. It's actually out now on the SCSA website so you can go to SCSA and find it by looking down the menu for examination timetables, have a read of what they're saying there, and then click on the link to find the actual examination. 2019 ATAR course written examinations timetable. There's a bit of blurb at the front, which I'll come back to in a minute, but you should read that. Then we see the interstate language examinations and this is what you're interested in for biology it's the whole exam timetable so you need to write this down very carefully and make sure you turn up to the right place at the right time for the correct exam so i'm trying to highlight here oh, what am i doing okay this is your biology exam it's note that it's on at 2 p.m and it tells you how long to how long before to get there but you need to get there in good time. When is it on? It's on week two of the examination period on Friday the 8th of November. So Friday the 8th of November in the afternoon is the bile exam. You should also have by now the handbook so you can be familiar with all the rules. So you click on that link that I've just clicked on there and it'll take you to the actual handbook. They're saying that only part one is ready at the moment, so you can read through that and be aware that this is referring to the final ATAR exam, which is happening in November. OK, let's head back to Schoology. So you know where to find a little overview of the ATAR courses. Now I'd like to remind you to use the stu st syllabus study checklists for, to make sure that you're actually addressing all of the objectives. You can find that on Schoology 2 under Tutorial 4, Units 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Um, you can watch the video if you like, and I've also put the actual checklists there, which I th suggest you copy onto the big paper, the A3 paper. And it's really, if you don't want to make the notes here, if you prefer to make your own notes, that's fine. But just make sure you have covered every objective, because as the examiners say, students have to study every objective and the exam is made up on these objectives. So that is the topic one and two. And then this is the topics three and four. Make sure that in every topic that you study, that you also study the human endeavor objectives. As we've said before when I've met you, these are often used as context in the exams. 
So there's some information there or, or some tactics that you can use to help you study to make it your own. I've been talking to some of you about concept mapping and tying that together with the idea of depth of learning. For example, being able to identify the main topics, sorry, the key ideas, define the key ideas, describe them, and then explain how it all works together. I like both of these diagrams for different reasons. The one you just saw before shows you the importance of stepping out the extended response with starting with the um, identifying, describing, explaining and including each one of that went before in your response. I like this one because it gives you a visual image of what each actually means. So when you are describing something, such as in the green area there, you're really describing lots of separate little bits of information. And when you can explain something, you are tying those bits of information together to explain how something works. In fact, if you carefully analyze that little diagram, it starts to look like a concept map where you're tying concepts together to explain, um, to explain a concept. I'll give you an example. I'm learning Swedish and I'm reading a book about intestines, as you do, and I came to a section where I really wanted to understand what they were saying. I started making notes. It was about a starch called resistant starch. They were talking about intestinal bacteria, immune cells that line intestines, they were talking about short-chain fatty acids, they were talking about um, these bacteria fermenting the resistant starch, but I, so I could understand what they were talking about, but I couldn't put it together in my mind to actually learn it and to tell someone else about it. So what did I do? I started putting the ideas together in, in a concept map. So here you can see the words or the key ideas or the key terms written in black. So I start with resistant starch. I tie the words in black together with arrows which form a little sentence. So it reads like this. Resistant starch is used in the large intestine Resistant starch attracts intestinal bacteria. The large intestine protects these intestinal bacteria. Resistant starch is fermented by the intestinal bacteria, which produce short-chain fatty acids. Now these short-chain fatty acids are food for our immune cells that line the intestines. And these immune cells are called Treg cells. They increase their population when they're fed the short-chain fatty acids and they produce more Treg cells. So this forms a healthier intestine. So the end point is that the body functions better, as the authors say. So really, I've explained what they said in the, their opening sentence that resistant starch helps the body function better. Now, I might want to add some more things to this. So I don't know what resistant starch is. So I went somewhere else and I found out that resistant starch is found in, I'll just put in three things here. So I'm showing you with a different colored arrow. So resistant starch is found in great quantities in green bananas and banana flour actually. It is also found in pasta that has been cooked and then cooled. So cold cooked pasta. And another place you can find resistant starch is in cold boiled potatoes. So you can add to this and doing a concept map like this just can lead to more questions and more critical thinking. But this is enough for now to give you the idea 
that a concept map helps you tie together descriptions so that then you can explain how something works. So happy studying and all the best in your examinations this week. Please remember to take care of yourselves by eating well and getting enough sleep. We do need sleep for our brains to make sensible connections between ideas, both in learning and in the examination, just like we make connections in a concept map. See you next time and hopefully we can help improve your examination technique when we look at your exams and give you some feedback on that. All the best.